Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, I'll put you as a host. Good morning. And I'll just send out an email to everyone. Okay, you're now a host. All right, now my microphone isn't coming on. Can someone make me? Oh, you have made me high school. Thank you. Mm -mm. Awesome. Let me just check my speakers because I can't hear anything for some reason. Let's check out the right speakers on. Hello. Can you all hear me? Okay. So I just had to switch yes. my speakers. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, my light lighting is really bright. Let's just see if I can change that on video settings. Adjust the low light. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Anyway, it's very bright. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I've got lots of lights on. Maybe that's why. All right. I am going to just live stream this in the Facebook group as well, just so that people there watching can jump in. And... Wednesday. And that's going to go into Techmatics group. Techmatics, go live. Debbie uh, or Nat, if you wouldn't mind just sharing um, the link in the Facebook group as well, just to be sure that everyone's got it. Okay, got it. I'll do it. Okay, we are recording right now. I'm just going to bring up uh, one of my little diagrams for you. I know you guys love seeing the flow chart. So I've got a flow chart here for you that I'm going to open up so that we can view that as we go. And then we'll get going. Right. That beauty is open. Let's move this over to this side. Lovely. We will get going. All right, so welcome to today's Tech Toolbox session. We're going to take you through running a free webinar or a free workshop. Why would you want to do these? Lots of reasons. It is a brilliant way to get more leads in your business. If you are selling anything at all, whether it's services, coaching, consulting, courses, anything at all. Having free webinars or free workshops is a fantastic way for people to join your email list and to get that taste of you, have the opportunity to ask you questions. And of course, you can also make these paid, but today I'm gonna to be doing a demo on doing a free one. You can put these together super quickly, get them out there so that you can run these, you know, even weekly if you wanted to as a lead generation technique in your business. As an example, how I'm using this this week is to promote my paid coaching program. So uh, I have my concept to course group coaching program that now only one runs once a year. And to generate more interest in that, I usually two weeks or so before the program actually opens is run a free public live workshop where I go over the steps of creating a course, which is the topic of my coaching program. And I invite anyone and everyone into that free training. I give them amazing value. I walk them right through all of the steps for creating a course and answer any questions that people have on that call. And of course, at the end, mention the fact that my concept of course program is now open for an enrollments. So it's another strategy that you can use for running these live workshops and live webinars is as a launch method to any of your paid offerings, your coaching programs or memberships that you might be opening or have open evergreen. And I will be showing you today the steps for setting that up, including creating the little opt-in form where people are going to give you their all important email address so that you're using this to grow your list in the first place. I'm going to then show you how to basically create the replay portal because you're going to have more than 80% of people probably come back and watch the replay rather than turn up live. 
We wish it could be a higher attendance rate than that, but these days, unfortunately, that is the reality. It used to be 80% turned up live, 20% have watched the replay. In today's world, 20% um, turn up live and 80% watch the replay. So always follow this middle step that we're going to go through today for setting that replay portal up because it's very, very powerful in scraping up some of those leads that kind of fall behind or cannot, for whatever reason, turn up live. You are in a global marketplace now. There's never a perfect time of day that everyone can be there live anyway. So by having this live replay portal mm. available. This is going to enable you guys to um, be able to service everybody everywhere, regardless of where they live in the world. We're also then going to show you the third step, which is creating that automation sequence so that when I opt in to your free webinar or workshop, I'm going to get that registration confirmation. It's going to send me the Zoom link. It's going to give me the time and date. It's going to send me a reminder before the workshop. Then it's going to follow up with some other emails afterwards, such as, could you leave a review? Would you like to come to my coaching program? Would you like to join this particular service or whatever product it is that you're selling. So they're the steps we're going to walk through today. And we're going to do all of this inside Techmatics, of course. I will also be adding this little diagram here into the Techmatics Facebook group under the files section. But this walks through the main steps that we're going to be demonstrating for you today. So if I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, step one is to create the opt-in form. Step two, to create that replay portal. And step three is to then create the automation. Now, a couple of things you might want to get ready before you jump into your tech to do this is one, go into Zoom and actually create that meeting for the time and date that you want to run that. I will quickly show you where in a second. The second thing you might want to do is just pre-create in Canva the thumbnails that are going to be used on your little course replay area and on your opt-in form so that it just makes it look a little bit prettier. And we usually do that inside Canva. Um, I've got one that I've made earlier, just as an example for you. Uh, let me open that up just to show you an example. This is the real life. Um, this is the real life image that I've created for my live workshop that I'm running this week. So you're just going to go into Canva, create something like this. You do actually have higher opt-in rates when you have a human face on the front of them, preferably yours or the facilitators. This picture here, like all of my others on my thumbnails, I simply take on the selfie timer on my phone. So as long as you're in a nice well-lit area and have a mobile phone that's you know been produced in the last five years, this is going to be perfectly sufficient. You just take the photos on your phone and then you just remove background in Canva and overlay it on top of your thumbnail design. And this is um, perfectly sufficient for your replay portal thumbnail and for your opt-in form thumbnail. We're going to go for the simple strategy um, today of creating this opt-in form that will then trigger off the automations. Inside your Zoom account is where you're going to create your actual Zoom appointment. So all you would do with that is simply log into your Zoom account on desktop um, and you're going to just quite simply press host a meeting um, okay with the video on I'm not going to press the button because uh, because obviously I, I can't um, oh sorry apologies I mean schedule a meeting what am I talking about you press schedule a meeting over here give it a time a title that's the title of your workshop choose the date and time how long that appointment's going to be make sure you've got the right time zone correct um, and then you're basically going to press save and that's going to give you your unique Zoom link for this particular meeting. Now, one thing I do also do to make sure that people in all different time zones are going to have the correct time to your workshop is to go into timeanddate.com or worldmeeting.com and you're just simply going to pop in the time for your location, select any other major cities that people might be attending from. It will then give you the correct date and time for all of those locations. I just take a screenshot of that and it goes into the webinar replay area later on. So um, that is an easy way for you to make it as simple as possible for people to know what date and time this is happening in their time zone. So there's a couple of things you might wanna prepare before we get started, but let's jump straight in with step one of creating your free webinar or your free workshop, and that's to create the all important opt-in form, the bit where people can give you their email address to register for this workshop or webinar. So inside your Techmatics account, you create forms by going to your websites and funnels section. In your websites and funnels section, you have forms, and you'll click on Builder. We're going to press Add a Form, start from scratch. You can use templates, of course, as well, but I'm going to show you how starting from scratch is just as easy. 
And in an opt-in for a free opt-in, guys, I would recommend you keep this as simple as possible. First of all, I would remove the phone number element if it's been pre-filled for you. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't like giving my phone number to anybody. I don't think even my own mum has my phone number. <laughs> Right, so this is just something that if you want to reduce those barriers to people opting in, remove as much information as possible. Think of how you like to give your information away. I even go as far for free things as removing the last name option as well. The smaller and simpler you make this opt-in process, the more likely you will be to get those conversions. So I reduce mine to first name, email, and then the terms. Now, if that thing isn't showing for you, let me show you how to add this in. And this is important for compliance, particularly if you're in the EU and you need to oblige by GDPR regulations. What you're gonna do is go to the plus button. I'm not trying to make bigger for you. The plus button on the top left-hand side of your form building screen. This is where you add your elements. If you scroll down until you find, I think it's called T's and C's in here. There it is. There's the T's and C's element drag and drop that over and you can obviously edit that however you wish or as per the terms of your industry it's got some pre-filled stuff in there for you you might want to change that hyperlink to your own terms of use or your own privacy policies or your own you know terms pages that you might have but essentially this needs to say i agree to receiving communications from this person or this company okay so edit that however you wish there now that is usually enough um, in terms of the fields that we would have. The button is now where you can start to customize. So inside this button section, you don't want it to say button, you're gonna click on it and on the right hand side, you can change it from the word button to register for free um, or register for the XYZ workshop. You can carry on scrolling down the editing area to change the color of that to whatever color you want and of course you can change um, the way the button looks you can change the font size thickness everything else as well um, so i'm going to just press save on that for now because we're i'm, I'm happy with how that looks what i do want to do though is add a title and a image to this form as well because people um, may just want that extra reassurance they're filling in the right form for the right thing so let's add in a title over again on our add button where we're adding elements there should be a text button there you can see this text button drag and drop your text element click on it and then on the right hand side is where you edit so this could be join the free workshop on xyz Okay, let's actually let's give this a name for demonstration's sake and I haven't got my caps lock correct. <laughs> let's call this on, um, I don't know, makeup, makeup tutorials, makeup skills. Okay, let's pretend that's what our workshops on today. Press save. Ta -da! All right, next thing I want to add is a image, which is the image for our workshop that we've created in Canva. So over in our elements, we're going to find the image button down here, drag, drop and choose your image and i'm going to just upload one i made for my other workshop here for the sake of example that will upload now if this text looks too big for you again you can click on it go over here and change the size of your text um, to whatever you want it to be you can center it you can change the background colors and all kinds of other stuff but i'm going to press save Make sure you name your form. This is really important for when we do our next step. So I'm going to call this the um, opt in form for free makeup webinar. This is for your administrative pur purposes later. You're get going to need to have named that properly. Save again. Now, the next thing we want to do while we're in the forms is make sure that we've added a confirmation pop up when someone submits this so that they can be sure that their information was submitted. So in the top right corner, and it's very hard to see underneath the save button, there's this little filter icon. When you hover over it, it says styles and options. When you click on that, you have these three sub menu items pop up and we want to click on the options here so it's the little filter icon then options and this is where what happens when somebody submits this form i recommend just changing this to a message and here you're just going to say something you know like thank you congrats your form was submitted or your place was your place was reserved please check your emails you know so whatever you want to write 
please check your emails for your Zoom link and workshop info. Whatever it is you want to say, that's just going to be a little text pop up that will pop up once they press submit so they can go, okay, cool, the form worked. Press save. And then we're going to get the link for this form just to have a little look at it. You press integrate and you can choose pop up or inline. It doesn't matter which one. I usually go for pop up and then copy form link. Copy form link. I then open up another tab just to have a look at it. This is just a preview and see what the form looks like. So, ta-da, there's our form. We're going to give it a fake fill-in right now. So I'm just going to uh, just put in my details on this just to see if it works. And I agree. Register for free. And it should say that. Congratulations. There you go. Your form was submitted. Brilliant. Now we know our form works. So that is step one complete. We've created our opt-in form. So now we can literally go and share that form, that link right away, and we will start collecting email addresses. But we wanna go one step further than that. We wanna now create the automations that people are gonna get and the replay portal uh, where they can go back and watch this later. So couple of different steps to take now. I'm going to first of all create the replay portal just so that we've got it there. Um, it doesn't matter which one of those two steps you actually take first, but I always create the replay portal first. To do that, we're going to go into our courses area, click on courses, and we're going to create a new course. So scroll down, click on products, and we're going to add a new product. So create a new product, start from scratch and start building our own and then you're going to give it the name of your workshop so it's going to be free workshop makeup skills okay create product now because this is only going to be essentially one recording it's going to be the recording of your workshop the category and the actual lesson itself is just going to be the name of your workshop. So I usually just copy and paste the title there. In the category, click on it, paste that title, grab your same cover image for your workshop that you've made and just upload it in the overall module section and press save. And then we're gonna go back to the lesson, so press back. So now there's our category title in. Now we've got to put our workshop title in. So we're simply going to be, and I'm going to make this a bit smaller, sorry, because it looks funny when it's all enlarged. <laughs> there's the title of this lesson. I'm going to paste it in again. And I'm just going to, in this one, put workshop recording here, just so it's really clear for people um, what they're getting. I'm also going to put plus date, time, and Zoom link. So this now is where, when you have recorded your Zoom call, you're going to go back into your Zoom account up here. You're going to go down to recordings and Zoom calls do take a while to process, but let's pretend that this was my workshop that I ran. You simply press, press the three little dots next to the meeting and you press download your files. Or alternatively, you can open the meeting and you can download this speaker view one. And it's the speaker view option that you want because that's the one that's gonna have the video on of your face and if you shared the screen as well, okay? So select the speaker view one, press download, and that is then where you would go here, upload the video file and simply upload the recording in here. But of course, this live webinar hasn't happened yet. That's only going to happen. You're only going to upload the recording once it's done, right? So meanwhile, what we need to do is add in the details of our workshop here. So remember I said to you, go to Zoom and grab the Zoom link and create that meeting at the, at the first hand. So I say, hi, this workshop is going to run live on X, Y, and Z dates and times, okay? Oh, on X topic, sorry. Topic. And then I will put in Zoom link is here and then obviously paste in the link for your zoom link and then i do dates and times and remember i said to you screenshot the dates and times meeting planner um this is where you would go and add an image press these three little dots here press the image button and this is where i press upload 
and upload that screenshot of the dates and times meeting planner that I screenshotted from the time and date meeting planner. Now, if none of you have um, ever heard of this before, just in case you don't know, just type in like world meeting planner, world meeting, I think it's world meeting. There it is, it's timeanddate.com.com.com. <laughs> Click on that. You choose the date of your actual webinar. So let's pretend it's gonna be the 18th of February. You choose the different locations and cities that you kind of want to give the times for. You can keep adding as many as you like. So blah, 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 I'm just going to pick a bunch of random ones right now. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, cool, you've picked, picked all the cities you want. You press show timetable, um, find the actual time that it's running. So if I'm running this in Sydney at 4 p.m. there, then it opens up that table. And all I do is just screenshot that little bit. And then we're popping that here so that everyone everywhere can see the date and time that this is running. So now, again, just to add a little bit of prettiness, we've got the thumbnail for this particular lesson. I'm just going to upload that same workshop image cover, same one as I've uploaded in the main thumbnail and in the main module area. I'm going to press save. All right. And you can even say something like the recording will be uploaded here afterwards. Oops, uploaded it, <laughs> loaded here after, and you will be notified by email. Okay, save. Always save after everything. This is an online cloud platform. And like all cloud-based platforms, if your internet cuts out, you might lose work. So now what we've got here, if we preview this lesson, in a second by clicking preview, no one will see that there is an empty video field. This is what they'll see. They will just simply see the text and that little time and date schedule. So this is previewing in admin mode. So that's all they're gonna see at the moment. Of course, the Zoom link there will be clickable because you would have put the Zoom link in there. Once you have added the video, that video will show up right at the top there. All right, just so you know what that will look like. And to give you an example, don't, no, I haven't got a really short video to upload. I don't want to um, cut out my internet by doing uploads at the same time. So what we have now is this kind of free workshop. We need to make sure that it's published. We can go into details over here and now upload the final thumbnail. So go to details, select image, upload that overall thumbnail again. This is what's going to show on your main dashboard of your whole entire online school. So now we've got the image for the online school, which is here inside details. The other image was for the module and the third image was for the lesson. But because this is just all one workshop, it's just gonna be the same image consistently throughout. Save, just FYI, um, down here, you can add um, your instructor information. So you can add a headshot of yourself, a little bit of a bio about yourself and everything if you want to. Um, that's just where that is if you'd like to start making things look real pretty. But right now, what we've done is created our opt-in form. We've created the portal for where that sort of work workshop replay is gonna go. And our next step is to now create the automation that's going to send them their confirmation and any reminders that we want to send through to. Now, before we move out of this area, I'd like you to just copy and paste your Zoom link and make sure you still get access to this email, uh, to this um, time and date section, because we're gonna pop this in the email that they get at registration, okay? So let's go and create our confirmation. Let's go into our automations, automated workflows. Excuse my doggies going off. I've just had some people turn up at the house. <laughs> Always happens when you're going live, right? We're going to create a workflow. Let's go. In fact, let me show you a couple of options you have with a webinar. You can start from scratch or you can actually use our webinar automation that's pre-built for you, which is down here. Webinar registration, confirmation, and reminders. Let's go in. I've done lots of starting from scratch things before. Let's go in and play with one of these recipes that are made for you. So I'm going to select the recipe, webinar, confirmation, and reminders. Now, the first thing is what is going to trigger or fire off this particular automation. 
Now ours is going to be the form. It's the form that we created, that form being filled in is what's going to fire off this automation. So the first thing we wanna do is remove this trigger link thing that's already in here. We're gonna get rid of the trigger link automation, click on it, press delete, press delete. The only option we have now to fire off this particular automation is when a form has been submitted. But we need to tell the system now which form is being submitted. So you can um, scroll down to where it says the form is, and then we have to press select and tell the system what form is going to fire off this automation. So you might need to um, use the type in to find your form, but there's our opt-in form for the free makeup webinar. Boom. We're telling the system that when that form is filled in, fire off this automation. Let's press save trigger. The next thing that we're going to do here is add a tag. This is essentially a label that goes on your person so that you can always know inside this person's contact record um, what they've been doing. And so this label is called a tag and we're going to press create our own tag over here. So I'm going to type in has registered for the free makeup webinar. You can make it up whatever you want. This is your label, it's your note to self and simply press add new tag. And that is going to add the tag, press save. So now someone fills in that form, they get tagged. Now we need to tell the system, when does this particular webinar take place? So you've got the webinar event start and date step here. Click on it. We now need to tell the system when our particular workshop or webinar is running. So it should say a specific date and time, click on the date and then go and choose your webinar. Make sure you are aware of the year here as well. <laughs> All right, you don't wanna set it for 2022. Obviously that's not gonna fire off. So be picking the right year, picking the right day, picking the right time. You know, we definitely don't want to be 2 a.m. And as soon as you're comfortable, you've got the right date and time, you're going to press save. This is now telling this sequence when our webinar is going, to is going to happen. Now, we now want to send them instantaneously a confirmation email. So you've got this little confirmation email step here. You can use a sexy template that you've made in your email templates area if you want to. Alternatively, you can use this template here. Now, remember I said to you, copy and paste your Zoom link. So you might wanna pop them all in here um, and put, pop in your Zoom link. You can edit this however you like. I also like to press the image button and add in, oh, you have to add in, um, oh, there, press upload. Add in that particular um, screenshot from the World Meeting Planner. Again, just so it's easy for people to say, oh, here is the workshop times. Save. Why is it not going to do it? Paste the link. I don't want to have a link in there. It's not going to let me do that. Oh, why is it let me do that? Okay, I think if you want the image in there, you must do it inside the template builder. Okay, so we're not gonna leave the email in there. What we can say is inside your replay area, you will find the um, time and dates in your time zone. Okay, or you might like to just type them in there if you want to. Okay, love Sarah, <laughs> however you wanna end it, press save. All right, so now, They've submitted the form, you've tagged them, you've set an event start date, you've sent them a confirmation email. Now, this is where I like to change up this template because I now like to automatically grant them access to that replay portal. So after your confirmation email, press this add button in the middle. We're gonna add another action, press add, and we're going to grant access. So I like to type in grant, grant offer, and it's going to say, what are you granting them access to? Oh, I didn't create an offer for this, did I? Makeup. No, I didn't create an actual offer. Sorry, let me remove that step. I'm going to go back and do that now. I'm just going to open this in a new tab. What I didn't do here, guys, is create an offer for this because it's based on a form. So please forgive me missing that bit out. <laughs> an offer is what has to be in place if you want to automatically give people access to a training. 
So I'm going to just go back to my courses area to do that. So I probably should add that step in my in my visual, shouldn't I? Let's go to our courses and memberships. Go to offers. Okay, so we've done our product, which is where the training is going to live. The offer needs to exist in order for us to automatically grant someone access. So let's press create an offer. And this is going to be again be the free workshop. I think I had it pasted there. Makeup skills webinar. What product is it? It's the makeup skills one. So go down and find that. All right, it's free. Create. Check that it's published, press publish, press save. So now we have an offer that exists. Now I can go back to this workflow. I am gonna to need to just refresh this because it won't pick it up if I haven't refreshed. So press save, press refresh, so it can pick up that new data. Okay, so it's taking a minute, isn't it? <laughs> Shouldn't take this long. My whole computer shut down right before this call, so that was fun. We must have updates going on in the background. All right, now she's playing. So I'm gonna just go back after that confirmation email, press our add an action button. Again, type in grant access, and it's gonna say grant access to what? And there is our free makeup skills webinar. So you're just gonna select the thing that they're getting free access to and press save. So what that will do, they submit the form, they get tagged. We've told the system when this webinar is running, that's gonna be important later. They've got that instant confirmation email. We've instantly granted them access to the replay portal. We are now saying to the system, wait until 24 hours before the appointment time. So this is where we've told it what the appointment time is wait until 24 hours before so you won't actually need to change this but just double check that it does say wait until the event appointment time wait until before one day one day before and it's saying one day before the date you put here that's what it's doing okay so it's going to wait until one day before the event start date and we're then going to send the 24 hours to go reminder email so mm -hmm. you're going to your name, change your email address, change your subject, and it's going to say, hey, contact first name, just to let you know your webinar is starting in 24 hours. Here's your Zoom link. Love from me. Okay. Edit that however you want. Press save. That template is already in there for you. And now we're going to wait until one hour before the event start date. One hour before. Um, you won't need to change this inside the template, but just double check that it says, event appointment time before one hour so that's going to wait until one hour before the date you've told it this is running and then it's going to send the one hour reminder email so just change your title your email address your subject line hi first name the xyz webinar is starting in one hour here's your zoom link see you there obviously edit that however you want to you can even go as far as adding a 10 minute before reminder. Now, if that's too much for you and you don't want the 10 minute before reminder, just press on the button and press delete and it will remove those next steps for you. Now, here's a couple of other steps I like to add to this recipe. I like to then wait until after the webinar to let everyone know that the recording is now available. OK, so what we're going to do is press add. And we're going to type in a wait step wait and we're going to wait for i don't know however long it's going to take you to upload this eight hours wait for eight hours and i'm just going to add that note to myself as well in the action name wait for eight hours save and then send an email email put in your from blah 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 and it's going to say um, i'm actually just going to copy this one for now i'm just going to press copy copy to here just so I don't have to type everything back in again this is just going to say hi contact first name um the replay of the xyz webinar is now live jump in and view it here and then you're going to put in the link to whatever your url is to your particular course portal how do you find that inside your courses area inside your settings 
and you've got your little custom domains and site details over here. Inside your custom domains, this is where you've got the settings to like your overall school. So if I was, this might not work because there's only a pretend account, but let me just see if that does work and if it goes anywhere. It actually should. <laughs> it does. Cool. So if somebody's logged in, it will take them straight to their portal. And because you've granted access to this, um, they will see it because they've been granted access above in the workflow. All right. So you're going to go and grab your school URL and place it in there. Um, hope you enjoy it, whatever else you want to write. Okay, save. Obviously, that doesn't want to say 10 minute reminder. That's going to need to say, here's the replay. <laughs> I'm just going to put that in for the sake of demo. Save. Okay, I'm going to remove this stats view because it makes it easier to see what's going on. Nice. So they've submitted the form, they get tagged. We've told the system when the event's taking place. They get their confirmation email to say they've been registered with their Zoom link in it. We've automatically granted them access to the replay area. We have waited until 24 hours before and we send them a 24 hour reminder email with their Zoom link in. We wait until an hour before and send them that hour to go reminder email. We wait until 10 minutes before and send them the 10 minutes to go reminder email. We wait eight hours and we send them the replay email. And then what we might do is ask for a review. We might say, wait for another hour or two. Let's pretend, I don't know, let's pretend your workshop was a couple of hours. Let's say, wait for three hours. Wait for three hours. Press save. And then we might just send them one more email or one more notification saying, please leave a review. So press add an action and type in review. And it's going to send a review request via email, press save, and boom, save. Now we have got people, a whole entire sequence. When they've submitted their form, they get all their confirmations, their access to the replay, all of their reminders, notification of the replay, and then a request for a review at the end. Now, if you have something to sell, I would also recommend that somewhere in here before this automation finishes, you also have an upsell. I would be adding in another email at this point saying, hey, first name, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Just to let you know, my XYZ program service, book a call with me, special consult, whatever it is, is now available. Here's the link to book in. Use these um, free opt-ins, these free webinars as your opportunity to sell, to share your products and your services. But now, once you're happy with that, you're simply going to press publish over here. You do that by turning it on. Um, that will be blue when it's published and you will have a full webinar system completely in place. The only, excuse me, the only thing you'll need to do is simply go back into your courses area and upload that recording as soon as it is done. Now you can test this by clicking test workflow, add yourself as a contact into the system and put yourself through the automation and you can push yourself through it. Just to let you know as well, um, you can through your um, enrollment history or execution logs, this will show you the people that have been through it. Back on the builder, you can turn on your stats view by turning that on. This will actually show you how many email of these emails actually got delivered, opened, clicked, how many people replied, if any of them bounced, how many people are set at each stage and sitting at each stage waiting. So I'd be checking in on that regularly as well, just because it does give you information or clues as to if something might not be working or if people are getting stuck at a certain point. Another thing I wanna point out is this start date and time will be based on the time zone that your Techmatics account is set to inside your business settings. Please be aware of that. So inside your overall Techmatics account, down in your settings over here, in your business profile, whatever time zone you have set here in your account settings will be the time zone that these webinar notification emails are executed on. Okay, I've just had a chat question pop up there. Just gonna double check it. Um, what if you're running one event at two different times? Um, do you mean that you're going to run it on multiple different days? Uh, 
Okay, well, so Claire, in that case, all I do is I create, if you're creating one of these webinars and you're running one at 10 a.m. and one at 5 p.m., as per Claire's example here, what I would do is create this one first, make sure it's exactly how I want it, and then duplicate it so you don't have to rebuild the whole thing again. So go back and find that um, inside your automated workflows over here. Then press on your recent, your little um, clock icon here, which show you your most recent things that you've been working on. In the little three dots, click on the three dots, press duplicate workflow. And this one would simply be called the 5 p.m. one. And the other one might have been the 10 a.m. one, okay? Press create. The only thing I'd need to go in and change now is the time that this starts and the time reminders in the email reminders. And of course, you can then go on and just duplicate this over and over again in the future for any other webinars that you run. All good, any questions? So what we've done here now is we've created our opt-in forms, we've created that replay portal, and we have now done our full automation. That now gives us our whole entire webinar registration. What link are we giving our customers? We're giving them the link to the form that they opt into. So let me show you how to make that form link pretty because it is a long um, blah, 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 gobbledygook link. So let's now go back to our um, websites and funnels, go and grab that form link, and we're going to make it your own domain URL to make it look pretty. Click on the clock to find your most recent things you've been working on inside our, oh, let's go inside our forms, form builder. Click on the clock. It's going to bring up your most recent. There's our form there for our free makeup webinar. Let's click on it. Get integrate, press copy link, or you can open form link there. So you see here, this is the link that you're going to be sharing with everyone to give them this opt-in form. If you don't like this link.techmatics.com.widget, blah, 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 copy this URL. We're going to make this URL pretty. Inside your websites and funnels area, you have URL redirects. Now, if you've connected your domain to your Techmatics account anywhere, all you have to do is press add a redirect, choose the domain, and this will show all of the domains you've connected to your Techmatics account or subdomains. So I'm going to choose which domain of mine I want it to be. The path is then it's the URL above forward slash. What do you want this to be called? So this will be forward slash free webinar, for instance. OK, and what do you want it to be a URL redirect? And what's the target URL? The target URL is where you're sending them, which is the form link. You're sending them to the form link. Add redirect. So now we've got this redirect here. If I now go to learn.techmatics.com forward slash free webinar, let me go pop it up in a URL box over here. This should take us to the form. Learn.techmatics.com, ta-da, there's the form. So what am I gonna be posting on Facebook or sending out to my email list? Come and join the free webinar learn.techmatics.com forward slash free webinar. Now, of course, this is if this was your website, your Techmatics account, you've connected your domains here, that would be your domain.com forward slash whatever you've put there. All good? I'm gonna answer some of the questions that have come up in here. Um, Claire says, do I have options in the form? Okay. Oh, do I have options in the form for 10 a.m. or 5 p.m.? Yes, you can add any form options or fields that you want inside forms. So if you go into your form builder, so this is where if you want to add any fields at all, inside websites and funnels, click on forms, go to form builder. Da, 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 da. Recent, find your particular form you've just done here you can create what's called a custom field. And you do that by pressing add a form element, this plus button at the top, click on custom fields, and you're going to create your own custom field, this very bottom blue button. This would be, um, for instance, it could be a checkbox or a drop down, a, a choice drop down. So maybe do, let's do a drop down, see how that looks. It's gonna be looking like this when they choose their option. Press next, and this is going to be what time do you want to join the webinar? 
Okay, and option, I'll choose, the group is where is this information stored as a field, just stick it in additional info, that means under the client's record, under additional info, that's where it will show what time they've chosen, and um, you don't want that in all these fields stored on their main front page client record. Now, option one is 10am, option two is 5pm, so you will be able to then see um, that information. To get it on your form, inside the custom fields, you scroll all the way to the bottom and there it says, what time do you wanna join? And boom, they can now choose. So if I press save and preview, it will now show that there's that drop down choice there. Okay, so that's all information you can choose. Um, what if you wanted to do multiple, oh, I've just lost Zoom, where's it gone? <laughs> there it is. What if you wanted to do multiple webinars, even if they were recordings? Excellent. Well, once you've done this once and you've uploaded the recording, all you're going to do is remove all of those date and time emails. It's literally just going to be they've opted into the form. That's the trigger. Then grant access to the recording area. Confirmation email. You've now got the access to the recording. Here's the link to your course area. Done. You don't need to have all those reminders. That's now completely and utterly evergreen as a free lead magnet opt in. Um, okay, cool. Any other questions? You can turn your mic on if it's easier than typing. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, okay. So I've worked out how to, and this is great because I've got one doing next month. I'm about to set up the yeah. 10 a.m., the 5 p.m. But then with the automation, at what place in the workflow so I know I'm sending them to the correct workflow? Ah, okay, yeah, good question. You're going to put me on the spot now, see how good my tech memory is for field um, dissection. <laughs> so you can use your custom fields to then what's called um, do conditional logic inside an automated workflow. So let me see if this will work in the one we've just done. Let's do recent, go to that recipe. Now conditional if else conditions inside workflows um, is when you can say to the system, if this or that has or has not happened, then send them down this path or this path. So for example, we can press the add button here and you can scroll all the way down to find the if else condition. There it is, if else. Now the condition is 5 p.m. or 10 a.m. Well, let's do it the other way around, 10 a.m. or 5 p.m. We should be able to select custom values here. Here we go. So inside branch one, the custom value should be, I can't remember what we called it now, what time? Did we say what time? Or is it not a custom valid? It's going to be custom field. Let me just go back. Come out. I don't want to be in there. Back. It's not custom values. It's custom fields. Is it going to let me do that? Contact details, custom field. Yes, we do. Okay, so it's inside the contact. All right. So just to, let me just tell you what I did there. Inside the condition, under the first branch, we're going to call this branch 10 a.m. In the selection box, you're going to go to the contact details, then scroll all the way down contact details until you find custom fields, because that field that we just created in the form was called a field, right? Custom field. Okay, and underneath custom fields, we should have what time did you want to attend? <laughs> If this is going to work, scroll down, scroll down. What time, what time, what time, what time? There it is. Woohoo. What time do you want to join the webinar? Then we want to say it includes 10 a.m. All right, because it's going to select from the drop down options we had in that form. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, the second branch is going to be, oops. Do I add a branch? You can add a branch. Oh, I'm gonna, why is it going to do that? I always put it in the other branch. Why don't you let me do that? Let's do add a segment. No, you don't want a segment. We want a branch. Please get the branch details before adding a new one. You have to save it. Let me move you guys out of the way. Save. Looks like you've missed out some fields. Maybe delete it. It could be a bug. Sorry, Nat? 
Uh, maybe delete it first. I'm not sure why it's not working though. Yeah, that should Can be you fine. scroll down? Do you have like maybe empty branch below it? Okay, that might be why. Okay, got it. Mm -mm. And then add a branch. You can definitely add another branch. Yeah. There we go. Now it's letting me add a branch. So for some reason, I just had to save it once and then redo it. So the other branch is going to be called the 5 p.m. branch. So again, we're going to press select the contact details, scroll all the way down underneath custom fields, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until we find the what time do you want to join the webinar again? There it is. What time? This time it's going to be includes 5 p.m. Okay, we've got our conditions now and the save as is going to work here. So now we have, they filled in the form and then did they fill in the 10 a.m. or did they fill in the 5 p.m.? Now, all we're going to do here is we can start duplicating what happens underneath each section. So where we've got our tag, this one, we might actually change that to or add another tag, might delete that and say, has joined the 5 p.m. free webinar for makeup skills. All right, add new tag. And then save. Now I'm going to press copy, copy the action and copy it here. But now I'm going to edit it because this one's going to be has joined the Oh, I think I did it the other way around and I anyway, that's the 5pm should have been the other way around. <laughs> you get what I mean? All right, save. Now, um, we're just going to simply copy all of these elements and edit them instead of having to rebuild them all again. So I'm going to press copy, put that here, copy, action, put it here. But all I'm then going to do is go in and simply change the time that that one's running in the confirmation email, change the time that's in there, you get the point, you're just going to go through the whole process, copy, that one's going to stay the same because it's the same replay area no matter what and it's just going to simply be the same but changing those dates and times that are in it ba -ba! save latch is how you can get super clever and super techy with your different times or options now of course that particular field we created there was just for a time of a webinar let's pretend you are a real estate agent selling properties and the form asks What's your annual average income in your household? And you've got your brackets, you know, up to 500,000, up to 1 million, up to 2 million. That's going to put me in different automations for different properties that I might be interested in buying based on my annual income. If you are filling in a form where you're, I don't know, you're offering consulting and you offer consulting in a number of different areas. Maybe you do business strategy, marketing strategy, and something else, mindset. In that form, you might have a drop down that says, which things are you most interested in learning right now? What's the number one thing you're most interested in learning right now? That condition, instead of 10 a.m. or 5 p.m., is going to be leadership, marketing, mindset. And we'll put them down different pathways for their welcome sequences or what you're offering to sell them based on what they opted in. Now this is taking our techiness to a very advanced level, but hopefully you can see they're not as scary or complicated as it looks, okay? These things are really possible for anyone to, to learn and to figure out. Uh, Audrey says, is this only for live repeated webinars? Um, oh yeah, I already answered that one. No, this is for anything, anything at all. Um, absolutely any kind of pre-recorded course, pre-recorded challenge, pre-recorded coaching program, anything whatsoever uh, can be automated on here. Any other questions? No? Does that help? Did you get some tips from today? This makes it a bit clearer. Awesome. If any more questions do pop up after this session or as you start going in and having a play, do drop them in the Facebook group. Obviously, uh, we're all in there every now and there and again to um, check in, answer any questions that come up. Now, also, don't forget you can hire our tech experts. It's just 50 bucks, right? If you want someone super techy to just log into your account with you for an hour and help you do all of this stuff, if it's just too overwhelming, you sit there with them, you're instructing them what you would like that what you would like to happen, and you're actually learning because you're watching at the same time. It's only 
50 bucks to sit there for an hour with a tech expert to get this stuff done. So don't put this off if it's scary or if it's just going to take you too long. Get your live workshop. I give you all a challenge. I'd love to see every single person publish a live training of some kind within the next 30 days. And I want you to share the link to your thing, to your form inside the Techmatics group so we can all see um, your creation. We can maybe give it a test or an opt-in for you uh, if you want us to have a little look at it. Um, Andrea's got a hand up. Did you want to ask a question? Yes, um, Sarah. Um, thank you. This was very helpful. Uh, what happens if you don't plan on uh, giving the record in? Because the, my understanding is the best practice is that you should, I'm a beginner, okay? So you should do the presentation three or four times, record it for your own quality control. Um, what What is your recommendation in terms of um, beginners giving recordings of their first webinars? Well, I would still absolutely use that as an asset to continue to build leads into your business. So, you know, even all of our first anythings are not going to be completely perfect, uh, but you still want that recording sat there so that you can continue to share this free opt in option on your link tree, on your socials, you know, on your website as an opt in. When you've re recorded that again in the future, all you're going to do is go back into that course portal area, delete the video that's in there, and replace it with your version two, <laughs> your improved version. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all I've done over the years is as my, my presentations improved, I've just deleted the old one, replaced it with version three as they've got better. Simple as that. You don't need to rebuild the whole system again, just replace the recording of the video. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So glad it helps. Let us know if you've got any questions in the Facebook group or always remember that we have that 24 hour live support at the bottom of your dashboard. Um, this is your absolute best place to always, always go. Bottom right hand corner. I know it looks like a very fuzzy question mark. I think we need to make that look a bit prettier. Nat, maybe you can help us change that icon. Always jump on there, press the chat box. There are real human beings on there 24 hours a day. They cost me a freaking fortune in their wages. Please use it. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please use it, okay? Because I have human beings literally sat there twiddling their thumbs. I mean, they're not twiddling their thumbs all the time. They're very, very busy, but um, please go there first. There's people there all the time to help you. If you're having that miscommunication thing, do say here, can I book a Zoom call with you? Can we just jump on a Zoom? Um, that, that, that sometimes can be done, but that's definitely going to um, be your first port of call for all support if you need it and don't want to wait for an appointment. Otherwise, enjoy the creating, enjoy the learning. It is all a learning curve. Tech can be very frustrating. It can also be the most liberating thing that you can ever do in your business. You are capable of learning this. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Happy tech in. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. Thank you.